Yes, yes, we're back again. Magic Mike always entertaining you right here. And on the Zoom Live, and then we just grabbed the audio, put it on the radio stations. We got my man Tone Vera. What's going on, my G? Magic Mike, it is such a pleasure to be on this <laughs> platform with you. I love Zoom just for this. It connects people worldwide, man. Canada, North America, boom. Yes, it does. You know what I mean? See, I tried Zoom back in April. I just didn't like the way the audio came out. So I just, you know, I just kept it traditional using the phone, right? And then, you know, a lot of the majors are saying, and you know this person because you're PR, you're over at uh, Shady and, and everywhere, right? They don't want to give the phone numbers out anymore. They said it's very inconvenient. A lot of DJs do call them back. So, you know, the whole Zoom thing is great. You could take the audio and things of that nature. You know what I mean? You could create movies with Zoom. I've seen people create movies. So we're living in a great time right now. COVID-19 is a tragic thing that happened to the planet, you know, worldwide. It's a worldwide effect. But at the same time, if you're a survivor, you can get through this. You know what I mean? So I've been seeing some of the Absolutely. work you're putting in, Tone. You're putting in a lot of work over on your end. It looks like COVID-19 didn't even stop you. <laughs> it's still going, huh? Not at all, man. I call it the Quarantone. You see it on the hat right here? Quarantone. <laughs> Quarantone 2020. How can, they, how can they cop that, man? That's a, that's a nice hat. You got some shirts and stuff, too? You know what? This management company gave this hat to me, man. I wish I wish they gave me more of them. I would be giving them out because everybody's been talking about how they want an LED hat now. Okay. Quarantine, man. Nah, All man, right. you know what I say? Quarantine is what you call it when you're thinking negatively. Quarantine is what you call it when you're thinking positively. Feel Ex me? Exactly. So, Tone, you know, I know right now you're currently living in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, you've attended yes. uh, some Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn College for radio. You've done radio. You've actually got the certificate. Uh, after that, you've uh, done several years of producing your own radio show. You know what I mean? So it looks like you've got the hands-on on that. And, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about that. You know what I mean? You're into the TV now and whatnot, and you're over at Shady 45. So how did this, you know, what inspired you to, to get in this route? Uh, you know, I'm just a small-town boy with a big dream, Magic Mike. <laughs> Nah, man, you know, it was one of those things. I started being around the entertainment industry very young. I was always around artists. And I used to, I remember recording off like a Windows 98 computer. And those computers were not equipped to have production studio quality. And I remember just plugging a mic directly to the computer. And that's where it all started, man. I used to rap a little bit, but my friends, they were the ones that I produced. And now years later, I'm still doing that in some capacity. Okay, so um, you're over at Live 89 FM and you're over at uh, Shady 45, right? And, you know, how did you yes, get over yes. at Shady 45? Because you got a serious position over there. You're like overseeing the artists before they get there. Um, from what I was told uh, through our own Zoom meetings over at the company, that you actually grabbed the artists hands on, right? Some of the interviews. Well, most of the interviews. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So they got me working as an associate producer. So what we do is we go and grab the artists literally when they arrive and bring them back to the studio. That's one of the many things I do on top of running the actual show, like running the board. I actually help with the artist side as well. Sometimes we're responsible for making sure that they get to the building. Like we're the ones stay keeping correspondence with their management. So cool. that's an important part because artists don't do anything without, you know, their whole team being involved. Uh, but I actually did have a position at one point um, before I worked at Sirius XM where I was picking up artists from the airport. That was a separate job. I used to work with uh, with Fox and I actually used to pick up clients from airports. And most of the time it was like famous people. But that had nothing to do with the radio side of things. Because I think if you want to work in the entertainment industry, you got to work different jobs to see where you fit in, you know whether you want to be on the PR side of things or the marketing side or the production side. And I found that I fit well working more on the production side, being creative and working with artists. And also you're involved with a comedy series, you know, I'm funnier than you in Manhattan. I guess the production's out in Manhattan. Tell us a little bit about that, about uh, this production that you're doing with this comedy series. Man, I love comedy, man. I've, I've always been a funny guy. And I, I started doing comedy later on in life. I started doing comedy when I was 30 years old. That's when I finally decided to pursue stand-up. And part of doing stand-up is you got to be seen. You got to be, be in the scene and be around other comedians. 
So the best way to do that is to run a show. So I run a show at a venue located in Manhattan. It's a very popular venue. And every time we do a show, we sell it out. It's been, it's been a real pleasure to do that show because I've gotten to work with so many other comedians. And that's such an important thing for me in this industry, collaborating with people. Because I always tell people, you need other people to grow. And I've been able to do that. I've taken a small show and it's become kind of like a, a name in the scene. Like people go, oh, Tone Show? Yeah, that's a show you want to be on. Because one, he pays you, which most comedians don't get paid. And two, you get a good crowd. Comedians want a good crowd. They don't really do it for the money, but they want to be able to work their material in front of a good crowd. And that's what I provide. And we do the show every three months. And we've, we've turned it into something special, man. I hope that one day you could come out to New York and get to experience it. Um, if the guy that runs Live 89 FM, he actually DJs our show. and it's been great having him on as well because he just he adds that energy because he's a pretty funny dude as well. I always tell him he needs to get on the mic, but having him DJ the shows just adds more like, I guess you could say it adds a name to it. And people go, oh, shoot, like J45 comedy like this is lit. Uh, man, that's so dope how you're getting into the comedy field and you're in the music field. Now, what's some of the advice you got for some of the artists, right? Because, you know, you do PR work, too, as well. Now, um, what are some of the stuff that UPR people are looking for? So, you know, some of the artists now could it shaping up some of these skills, get their packages together. So what do they need to come talk to you? Man, I have a lot of artists that send me their music directly through DMs. I think um, I think we're we have so much technology at our disposal. I think we're forgetting about the lost art of actually communicating with somebody. Cause I got guys who are like, yo, check me out. I'm fire. I'm, I'm, I would rather hear why you're fire. Don't just tell me you're fire and don't say, Oh, just click on my link and hear it for yourself. I hear a lot of music. I've almost reached the point where I don't, I don't really want to hear music anymore. It's like, I care more about what's behind the artist. You know, I want to know a little bit about their story. And I tell you, man, ever since I started working at SiriusXM, a lot of a lot of artists, people who are like unsigned, they're just like they have this desire to be, you know, to be on this platform. And I just tell them, listen, though this isn't the end goal. Definitely verse yourself in where it is that you need to be in your career and don't rush anything. I mean, like I just told you, I started comedy later in life. I I definitely wasn't in a hurry, and I'm glad that I followed that untraditional route because most comedians start when they're like right out of high school because that's when they're allowed to legally enter clubs and stuff but, but magic mike uh, i'll tell you this man art has got to be special they got to have something about them like who are the, some of the artists that you're actually looking at um some of the up-and-coming independent artists and some of the majors that you're really feeling right now and that we should look out for man i'll tell you this a few years ago when I was doing college radio, I interviewed this one artist, right? His name was Oswin Benjamin. Kid was really gifted, lyrically guy. I liked him. He had the whole package. He had a good look. He had a good backstory. He was from upstate New York. We all know that, like, you know, upstate New York has, like, some sleepers. You know, we got this group right now, Griselda, from oh. upstate New York. And they're making a name for themselves. But this kid, uh, Oswin Benjamin, brought him on my show interviewed him it was a great interview he kicked a freestyle it was probably one of the best interviews i had he was so professional and just real respectful kid and then two weeks later see how the world ties in he gets called up to go on sway show on shade 45 he goes on and kills it he kills his freestyle there and sway takes a personal interest in him and for the past few years he has been working with Sway and he actually is managed by the same person that manages Sway. So he's been somebody that they've been building up. He's been on the BET Cypher. He's been, he's been really doing his thing. Oswin Benjamin, that's a name that I want people to keep a lookout for. This dude, he's already making moves. He's been, he's been on Royce the Five Nines album. So he's definitely in the circle and he's on the come up. And I, I'm proud to say like I interviewed him first and like, 
you just never know, man. When an opportunity presented itself, he jumped on it. He got himself seen on a bigger platform, had a good story. And now look at him. He's out here, like, making crazy moves, dropping albums. Like, no, you, you I just know, love him. You know what? I think you're so lucky. You're lucky to be at Shady 45, Sirius XFM, to have some of these legendary freestyles over some of these legendary beats. You know what I mean? Big ups to DJ Premier, big ups to Sway, big ups to, Inf, big ups to everybody over there. But these, these freestyles are like deadly. You know what I mean? Shade 45 has got some of the illest freestyles on radio. What was the illest freestyle that you were actually there live to see? And what beat was that over? Me personally, I love, so I love, I, me personally, I love when people go over the enemy, you know, that uh, track by Fat Joe and Big L, enemy, D uh, DJ oh, Premier yeah. made that beat. Anybody that goes on that, you got to have lyrical boss. You know what I'm saying? I've heard some of these, a couple of these new school trap artists try to go on that. They just can't do it. You know what I mean? But you know what I mean? What, what surprised you? What's some of the artists that you've seen in person? Like, just like blow Man. your mind away. Every, every week we got new guys coming in, these unsigned guys, and they're just hungry. First of all, they come in because they're like, they, they know this might be their only chance to ever be heard on such a big platform like that. Like going to a radio station is cool, an FM station, but you're only going to be heard locally. Sirius XM is worldwide. It's like all of North America, all of Canada. It's not, it's not even just that, just, just digital radio in general, even live 89 FM. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. when we go on our, because I, I got day job, right? And I do things in a day. And, uh, you know what I mean? Like, they're too, I got this one guy listening to some urban station out in Europe, right? I'm like, no, no, you got to listen to Live 89, man. Like, what are you doing? So glad to be a, a company that has such a wide, like, wide range. I will say this. Um, one of the best freestyles I heard was from infamous Amadeus. He did a freestyle on the Static Selector show, bodied it. He did a freestyle on Sears show, bodied it. He did a freestyle on Who Kids show bodied it you said like you know the the enemy instrumental such a great well-produced beat and like dj premier works at sirius xm so it's like it's crazy that these guys that we talk about they're like my co-workers it's it's just like i'm still processing it sometimes i'm just like walking down the hallway and it's like you know dj premier will just be right there just chilling cracking jokes with people and then who kid will be right there so it's just like it's an honor to be among them and I just love that we're seeing so much raw new talent on a daily basis. Do you want to stay in radio or do you want to try and do something else like management to open up a restaurant or something? Because New York City is a big place. And I know a lot, I got family that live out there and they got multiple businesses. You can't just have one thing in New York, you know? So no, that's a fact. Well, that's the beauty of living here. You can pursue so many dreams at once and it's possible to do that. I definitely... You know, especially these past few months dealing with the whole quarantine, you know, I've definitely taken a mind to start a business. I definitely want to start up a, like a production company because I also create content for clients. We actually just finished making a documentary called Marcy Made. It's a movie about DeHaven Irby, and he was a former associate of Jay-Z. Jay-Z has actually mentioned him. In, in his music and that movie after releasing it it was the number one movie on vimeo for five weeks straight we released it digitally um so creating content is something that you know everybody needs people need music videos people want camera people people need photography shoots i can provide all that because that's that's where i specialize and i specialize in you know, taking an idea that you have and making it a reality. Yeah. It's all about fantasy nowadays. You give people their fantasy. You give them a dream. Sell them a dream. <laughs> so during this people whole... People absolutely love it. Yeah, man. I'm going to... Like, let's talk about Inf now, right? His, he's got an album called COVID-19. And I can't just stop playing this track, Try Me, produced by GraphWise. Man, you know what I mean? So I... You know, like, how is it, you know, how long have you known Inf for? Because Inf is the owner of Live 89, and there's multiple things like you just said, you know what I mean? And he's the one that, you know, uh, how can I say it? It's moving everybody, me, you, and everybody at Live 89 into a new direction, new light. Like, how long you known this brother for? I know him as soon as I started working at Shea 45. Let me tell you, uh, a person like myself gravitates towards people like him because 
he's the kind of guy you see he has a vision he executes it and he he talks the talk i knew i wanted to be around him like immediately because the way he talked you just knew he was somebody who knew how to move people move pieces and he has a lot of connections so it was I mean, like this is guy this is someone who is serious cuz most people are just like yeah i want to do this and then do nothing he says i'm going to do something and shows you results immediately so you know what i mean where you where your parents are originally from i know new york's got a lot of you know immigrants and people that come there i got family that have came there too as well do you ever like take off out of the united states go back home like we like you know like what do you do what do you do you're not always in new york you got to get away from there sometimes no nah, man i actually my parents are central american they're from honduras and el salvador and somehow i came out looking like this um but <laughs> i went I, you... I, I went when i was a kid but i don't remember it that well but um you know i always tell people that live in new york you got to get out of new york at one point you can't just spend your whole life here i spent most of my 20s traveling all over the united states mostly i lived in the west coast like i went to college out there and i and i did college in new york as well that's where i finished college but i started doing college out west and i lived all over i had like various jobs and it was a great experience for me i got to be around all different kinds of people and i my life is a definitely a very unique experience and that's something i carry with me every day but uh yeah you got to get out of the city man the city can just drive you insane how like how we tell people how is no, go ahead how is new york city now and just america cuz the news will tell you one thing but living down is different how is the tension how is the protesting is it still going on like how is it in new york cuz i'm hearing from my family that you know certain areas are affected but you go to certain areas you don't see it you know what i mean like the news makes it look like the whole united states is involved in this whole thing like you know how was it in your section where i'm at it's pretty peaceful i i haven't seen any protests in my direct neighborhood i saw like one small protest that lasted 15 minutes but it was just a peaceful protest like there wasn't any police around but that was when it was at the peak of everything now everything's kind of died out i know that people go to the high concentration areas like in the city manhattan that's where they most of the protests are still happening but for the most part i live in a very chill area remember what very... remember what donald trump said right cuz the reporter stood stood up right and said hey don uh mr president um what do you say about everybody burning cars and police stations right and they don't really show you this but i saw it on youtube he goes i'm not too concerned about that it's just going to die off <laughs> and it is people are forgetting what really happened here you know what i'm saying like nobody's like holding up the black light it's just man i don't know man i don't know where this world's going you know what i mean like i will the- say i will say this magic mike i will say this when this whole protesting started that was the most i had watched the news this is going to be a sad statistic <laughs> that was the most i've watched the news since 911 i was 17 <laughs> i was 17 years old when 911 happened right now so it took another 18 years for something to happen for me to like really sit down and watch the news i was there watching when people were protesting in atlanta and they were about to take over the cnn building and i'm just there like yo i want some popcorn i was watching the news like yo this is some good stuff like <laughs> i was like it was like I, felt, i had like mixed feelings i was like oh man why are these people out here they're protesting but i was like i get it and they, did uh the pre did he get to go on shady yet cuz i know he won one of the uh, yeah, sessions i actually had him on one of, i actually had him on the magic hour and you know he was telling me he was happy about it and everything else uh, how was that was there a video of that they can go look at this i don't think there's video of that cuz he didn't actually get to go up he just submitted something that was played on the air because we're doing vir- we were doing virtual ciphers that's right that's right that's right are y'all still having that like uh how long y'all going to be having this for or you you guys just took a break on it. No, that segment's ongoing. We're always looking for new people to put on the air. Um okay. and and that's I think that's one of the great things of being involved with the Punchline Academy is that you know, you build a rapport with Inf and if Inf if he feels like you're ready for the big show, he'll bring you on. Like I know we have a ton of guys, regulars who just come on every week on the live and 
they become favorites and these guys they're ready because they're hungry yeah man i was i was there in a few of them because you know I, like i said i got a little day hustle right and it cuts in into the time that you guys are on i don't like to arrive i don't like to arrive late you know what i'm saying but uh i definitely want to join you guys again and we should do a canadian edition you know what i mean get a couple artists from canada oh, that would be so dope. u.s u.s versus canada <laughs> You know what I mean? And, and the flyer and the flyer would have a bunch of heads versus a bunch of heads. They're head to head. Eh? No, no. But everything's all fun, fun and spirit, man. Like without the battle in hip hop, you know, without battling, battling is like one of the foundations of it. It keeps it alive. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure after Nas and Jay-Z had the thing, they both had a drink and laughed about the whole thing. I know I would. You know what I'm saying? Because they just made a whole bunch of money from it and they kept hip hop alive. Now, another thing too, do you see, like I see a lot of bars coming back to the game. Like, a lot of, like, lyrical bars. I see New York actually really, really, really doing it. You know, 2019, New York took it. I don't care what anybody says. I understand the South and, you know, out West, they got a few artists here and there. But NY's got, like, you got the whole drill. Boom Bap's coming back with Griselda. Man, Cardi Absolutely. B. You know what I mean? Even though, you know, 6 9 has got a little rep now. You got 6 9 Like, everybody's just spewing <laughs> out of the East right now. You know what I'm saying? And there's probably some artists that you know that we don't know about. Like, how is it that yeah, New York like, came back? New York came back with an ass whooping. You know what I'm saying? No, man. It was a long time coming, man. That's all we've been talking about for, like, 15 years, that New York needs to come back. It's that sound that, I mean, first of all, New York started. New York started the whole hip-hop scene, you know, right here in the Bronx. So it's been years that we've been trying to reclaim it. You know, we've had people try, but not nothing against, like, the South or the West, the I think all hip hop is dope. As a matter of fact, I actually have like a preference. I like these Philly spitters we get on the live. Whenever I hear somebody's from Philly, in my head I go, oh, I know this dude's going to be dope. No person from Philly has disappointed me so far. I don't know what they're putting in those cheesesteaks magic. The best way to contact me is through Instagram. That's that's like my favorite social media platform, but I'm on everything. Just search for Tone Vieira, T-O-N-E dot V-I-E-R-A. I got a website. I got a YouTube channel. Once you find me on one thing, I connect that through everything else. Definitely, I'm very responsive, so feel free to reach out to me. I don't think I'm, I'm Hollywood. I talk to all artists, and I, I tell them, hey, listen, this is how you make an EPK. Put something together. You know, I'm, look, I know what it's like to not have anything. So it's like I know where these artists are coming from, and I see their desire. So when they come to me and they're like, yo, man, how can I get put on? I'm not just going to be like, good luck. I'm going to be like, actually, you know what? Do you have access to this? Do you have access to that? You know, here's a couple of resources. Definitely, you got to polish you up and present you. Um, yeah, man, because like, I know what it's like, man. I know what it's like to not have anyone want to help you. So when artists come to me, I definitely hear them out. So feel free to reach out to me if you're an artist and you want to know how you can get heard on fm radio how you can get a little bit of more of exposure for yourself and no i'm not going to hit you with my cash app link i'm not going to try to charge you for anything i'm not here for that i don't need money i do well uh outside of you know outside of everything that i do i don't i don't need to take your cash app money <laughs> we were talking about that for a while how there's like a lot of platforms that charge you for things like this but it's like no you got to do it for love because if you love hip-hop you love the culture and your heart's in the right place Got to be willing yeah. to help somebody out. Don't you do? You build it, they come, and then money comes with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, that's how it Yo, works. You said it. You said you it, Magic I mean? Mike. Can I tell you something? I remember, like, when of I course. first started doing my things, right? And, you know, people were like, you should be charging this much. I go, no, don't charge right now. You give them a taste, right? Once they get hooked to the taste, you know what I mean? The word goes out. And all of a sudden, man, people come to you. And that's when you start charging. You know I mean, the people helping your foundation at the start, there's no need for money because we're all going to break bread in the end. You know what I'm saying? So, um, exactly. Tone, and I've thank seen you. it. I've seen it. Tone, thank you so much for coming on. You know what I mean? On both platforms of mine right here on Live 89 FM. And uh, is there anything you want to say? You coming up to Canada sometime? Because I know, you know, you've been hearing a lot of artists from Canada recently out of Toronto. A lot of gun violence yeah. going on. A lot of gun violence in Chicago, even in Brooklyn. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of artists up here in, in, in Ottawa and in Toronto, all over Canada. You coming up to Canada or something? Are you looking at Canadian artists? To, I, I look at whoever is put across my path. But listen, I've been to Canada a couple times already. I've, crossed, I've gone to Niagara Falls and crossed uh, the border. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> as a matter of fact, I, I would like to go back as soon as possible, man. I, I want to go back. Canada is such a beautiful place, and I know there's a lot of talent there. So if I could go out there and run like some kind of showcase, I think that would be so dope. Yo, I, I do my show. It's a dope show. I basically keep it old school radio. I talk, play a song, talk, play a song. It's a fun show. I crack jokes. I have a good time. I'm just talking all positivity, and then I do the quarantine mix. So it's a good show. I need y'all to check it out, and I need y'all to stay locked in with me. Please feel free to reach out to me. I'm out here. Like, obviously, I ain't doing much because we're still on technical lockdown. But, you know, I definitely look forward to hearing from new people. And another, yeah, but I was saying, too, thank you. That, that's value information. Big ups to Tony. You should listen to his radio show. It's, it's popping. But also, I wanted to let you know, right, what do you have to say for the people in the world right now that's going through some things? you have some words of wisdom for them? Man, everybody's always going through something. He's um, like, I don't care about that, man. You deal with it. <laughs> yeah, you know. I'm playing, you know, man. Um, yeah. You know, so, sometimes I tell my younger nephew, I tell him, I wish when I was your age, I wish I had people like my, myself in your life um who were like kind of mentoring me but you know not everyone's fortunate for those of you who feel like you know you got no support be your own support like definitely you know make it a priority to be the best version of yourself by doing good deeds i know that sounds real simple and cliche but doing good will bring good into your life and you know I'm not trying to get too preachy, but just like, yo, you'll see things, good things happen to your life once you start blessing other people's lives. Even something as small as smiling at somebody will bring good energy your way. Of so course, man. I'm see always, the other person smiles. See the other person smile. Uh, that's what I do, man. Like the money's great and all and whatnot on the sides or whatever, but just making people happy. That's what we're doing it for right now. You know, making that positive energy. Exactly. And this is the entertainment industry. Remember, entertainment is tied in with feelings. When people see you, whether you're playing music or acting or telling a joke, you're creating a response from a person. So you're entertaining them. And that's how you do it, man. Through, through this, that's what media means. Media means a medium. It's a form of communication. So, um, you know, Give off what you want in return. And uh, like, that's just, it's worked for me. I've seen it happen in life, man. A lot of people out here, they're going through stuff. It's because me, you're not inviting enough good energy into your life. So yeah, that's just me trying to sound not too cliche, but man, I have faith in everybody. I know, I know we're going to come out stronger out of the situation. I know we're going to be all right. <laughs>